So have you ever been in a situation where you filmed everything and then you get back and then discover that your white balance is wrong? Well, we can fix that. We're gonna go to Resolve and we're gonna go over to the temperature slider. We're then gonna increase that thing, weigh the math up and boom, it looks like garbage. And you may be wondering, what am I doing wrong? The color temperature was off, so I adjusted the temperature slider. Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to solve problems just like that and bring your color balancing game to the next level. It's time for a deep dive on color balancing. This is the shot on the Blackmagic Pocket 4K cinema camera, and it was shot in ProRes LT at 5600 Kelvin, which is probably a good call because our subject here is lit with a light that's at 5600 Kelvin. However, if you look in the background, you can see that we have a practical that's at about 3200, or in this case, because it's on a dimmer, closer to 2500 Kelvin. So this is an example of mixed lighting, as we have two wildly different color temperatures in our shot. This can be problematic if you're using some type of auto white balance or you just make a mistake and you set the wrong white balance in camera and you could end up with this. The white balance is set to these lights in the background here at 2500 Kelvin. While this looks terrible and it's definitely a fire the cameraman sort of situation, it could be salvageable. So your gut instinct may tell you, well, the color temperature's off and I see this says temperature here, so let's just increase this. And okay, yeah, we're getting a little bit better, um, but it's not perfect. Maybe we adjust the tint. Ah, I see there's a tint option here. Okay, we've made some improvements, but it's far from perfect. So at first glance, this may look okay, but if we compare it to what it's supposed to look like, we can tell we got a long way to go. Now in this case, the temperature and the tint sliders just aren't gonna get the job done. But if you see my video explaining exactly how they work and what they're doing to your image, you'll know that they operate very similar to a gain control. They make the largest adjustment on the brighter parts of your image, but there's less of an adjustment made on the darker parts of your image. As we increase this here, you'll see the dark parts are still dark, but the brighter parts, well, they're going out of control. And that's very similar to the gain control, because if we just increase the red channel, you'll see the brighter parts are going to get more red, but the darker parts, there's less of an adjustment made. So let's reset this node and see what we can do with that. So we'll start off by labeling our node and we're gonna call this balance. And before we touch any of our controls, we're gonna come down to our waveform and we can learn a lot from this waveform. So as you can see here, the blue is very dominant in the image. That's not just in the brighter parts of the image, but that's across the entire image, across the board, blue is extremely dominant. And if we look at our image, you can see that clear as day. And if you want specific examples of certain parts of your image, we can go to show picker RGB value. And whenever your picker tool is selected, you then can see the specific RGB values of areas. And if we look at our skin here, I mean, the blue is clearly dominant on this wall. Even in the spots that are supposed to be dark or black, the blue is still very dominant. And this actually tells us a lot. So now we know that large adjustments don't just need to be made to the brighter parts of the image, but across the entire tonal range of the image as a whole. And in that case, you're best off using your offset controls. We're going to decrease our blue in the offset. That's starting to get us closer, but it's all green, it's way out of whack. So you may think to bring our green down, but we actually wanna bring our red up. We're getting much closer and on our waveform, it's starting to look much more natural. So there's definitely some tweaking, but just looking at the image and looking at our waveform, you can see this is a much better neutral starting place. And if we check through on our picker, you'll see that blue is no longer dominant. It's much closer to neutral, but we do have a problem. Now we've made too much an adjustment on the darker parts of the image. As you can see, this is supposed to be black, but the red is now dominant in that area. Now, you may think the lift controls are something you wanna use in that case, but the primary controls are generally going to affect your image. If you wanna grab only specific areas and make adjustments to those areas, you're better off using your log controls. They're very specific in which part of the image they will grab, and you have control over what they'll grab. So we're gonna go into our shadow controls here, and we know that our red is too high. We have too much red, so we're going to decrease our red in our shadows. 
and maybe increase our blue a little bit. And let's just increase the green a little bit. And great, so now if we check out this black section, it's pretty much right across the board, right on top of each other, more or less. And controlling the range, we can make it so just the parts that we wanna to be totally black, the darkest parts of our image are actually black. So it's looking pretty good, but if we check our reference image, the skin is still way out of whack. It's way desaturated. Now there's a few different ways we could approach this. We can do some fine tuning within our gain controls, maybe bring down our blue a little bit, increase our red, so we get kind of a purple introduced into the skin, and maybe introduce a little bit of purple in the gamma, possibly just a little bit, throw some yellow in there. And if we wanna tidy it up a little bit more, I'm just gonna create a new node here, and I'm gonna call it Skin Warp. And we're gonna use the Color Warper tool, which is a fantastic addition into DaVinci Resolve 17. Now, in this case, we want some finer control, so let's bring it up to 12 points of control. And now we can just grab the skin and put it where we want it. So we want a little bit of saturation increase. So I'm just gonna pull away here. And yeah, right there, that's starting to look pretty good. I think we're right on the money right here. So we started off with what looked like an unsalvageable image, but through understanding our different tonal controls and how we can make adjustments to the image, not just using our temperature and tint sliders, we were able to turn it into a nice balanced image that you can start grading with and working on. But that's for a shot in ProRes. What if you shot it in some form of RAW? So this shot was done in Blackmagic RAW at 2500 Kelvin. Now we can make adjustments in our temperature slider and we still run into the same problem, but the great part about RAW is I can go in and decode using my clip settings and now I can actually set the color temperature of the camera. So, bing, bang, boom, we're done. We're right where our reference image was within a matter of seconds. So now you may be thinking to yourself, well, great, I'm just gonna shoot him raw every single time and I'll never have to worry about balancing in post again. But that's not necessarily true. While we did fix the glaring problem of being at a wildly different color temperature, there's still issues with this image that we need to fix. As we examine the image, you'll see that our blacks are not black. We have a yellow tint on our t-shirt here that wasn't there in real life, our skin doesn't look great. There's definitely parts of the image that we could still fix, but this is a pretty extreme example and you're probably sick of looking at my face. So let's go to another shot here that's something more common that you may encounter. Now this was shot in Blackmagic Raw at 5600 Kelvin. And the director told us for this shot that they want it to be nice, clean white. Well, just looking at our image and at our waveform here, we clearly don't have that. So it was shot at the wrong color temperature. Because it was shot in raw, we can just go in and adjust our color temperature. So we're gonna switch to 3200. Okay, that's bringing us much closer. It's much less saturated now, and it's getting us closer to that clean white that the director wanted us to go for. So now we get started on balancing the image. So if we examine this door here, we'll see that we have a little bit of a red bias and blue is a little bit low. So this door is particularly bright and you can see it over here in your waveform. I think this is a good example of being able to use our gain controls. So we want to increase our blue a little bit and decrease our red. And checking our picker, you'll see that pretty much got us there right across the board. Now we wanna to start to clean up this wall here. Now this can introduce some problems. It's gonna change what we did with this closet here as this is kind of a mixed light scenario. There's lots of different lights going on. We have a warm light above her, but we have the cold light from a window coming from this side here. So that's why you can see it's much colder over here and much warmer over here. Now there's a few different ways that you could deal with that. In this case, we're gonna create a new node and we're gonna call it gradient. And we're gonna go into our power windows and we're going to select the gradient tool. Then we're going to select our highlight just so we can see what parts of the image we're affecting. We're then gonna soften this thing, weigh the math out. And right now we wanna get it to match the rest of the wall. So as we look, we see this is more separated on the rest of the wall as this is a yellow wall. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make adjustments in our gain and we're going to match it to the rest of the shot. So now we can just separate that out a little bit. So now as we check the before and the after, you'll see it's much more even across this wall. It's much more evenly balanced with this yellow wall and we still have the white on our closet here. And it's always a good idea when creating windows to check your entire clip just to make sure that there's no massive camera movements or changes that you may have to track or make some adjustments with. But in this case, there's not a lot of movement, so we can get away with a simple gradient like this. And now 
We can just bring some saturation back to the image. Maybe bring up our color boost a little bit, increase our saturation, get our contrast where we want it to sit, bring up the brightness, and just make a few adjustments to get the image closer to what the director wants. And now we have this nice balanced image with a little bit of a look up that kind of fits the creamy, clean look that the director was looking for. And even though there's a number of different light sources at play with all sorts of different tints, we were able to balance the image the way we wanted using specific tonal control to be able to get everything the way you want it looking. And finally, if you're looking to make fine-tuned adjustments, the high dynamic range controls is a great place to look as it allows you to select specific parts of the image tonally and dial in exactly where you want to grab and what you want to do. And if you want to learn more about that, I have a full tutorial on it and there's a link down in the description. <laughs>